So it's 5 a.m. or oh, more like 5.15. Uh, waiting for my friend now and we're gonna go take a cold water dip. Uh, yeah. Me and Chow here I just about to go into this water. You can't really see it. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yep, that's it. <laughs> So we just went in, couldn't really see it on the video, I didn't get a good angle, but we're going to the pier now to jump in. How did you think? Yeah, it was great, it was uh, amazing. Um, you feel like an absolute god, as soon as you come back up from the shore. True. It's, um, waking up yourself in the morning and the first thing you do is just fucking challenging your brains. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good 2021. That's the way. Are you sure? Yeah. Alright, okay, you give it a go. Watch your legs. I forgot to record this bit, but I got home and had a shower and then did an hour of study. So I just finished one hour of studying and taking some drawing. Like I said in the last vlog, I want to spend more time like discussing my like the overarching narratives I'm going towards and skepticism, yes. Uh the overarching narratives I'm going towards. And so I'll do that. Uh, essentially why I was so lazy on first. Why I'm drawing is because I want to learn, you know, I made this sort of music video type thing that was like a storyboard, just you can think of it like a cartoon um, that is used as a guide for like making a film. Um, and I found that like way easier to make than writing like a screenplay or something. Um, and it was much more intuitive for me. So I think I'm gonna continue just instead of trying to learn how to screenwrite is just make storyboards. So I wanna get better at drawing for that. But with that music video, I am in the middle of January. It's just 12th of January now, so 10 days away. I am, me and my friend is, who does drawing is gonna help me like redraw the whole uh, Sorry, about it looks good, and I'm gonna have a complete project and something I can send to people to see if they can get made, which I highly doubt it will, but you know, go shoot your shot. But just having it completed in that form is, would just be, just as a storyboard, just be really satisfying for me and then give me a bunch of other projects. Why I'm, uh, why I'm studying is usually I have to study or draw for an hour, I want to move up to two hours uh, a day, is uh, of course, sorry, not study or draw, study or um, storyboard or create stories uh, more accurately, is because I want to, I'd like to make films in the future, uh, you know, movies preferably. Uh, I know that's very hard to ask, but uh, the reason I want to do that is, you know, movies, they're beautiful and they have, they're very meaningful to me and you know, I don't have a real poetic way of saying it, but it just it feels like the most meaningful thing I can do is to try and create these films. And I felt that when making this sort of short film, and I think I'll, I'll obviously upload that short film, uh, well, music video sort of thing once the storyboard's finished, but I might make a video just explaining what the story's about, like in oral format. Uh, but what I'm studying at the moment is, you know, ever since 2018, you know, I've wanted to make movies since around, I think, 2013, 2012, when I was about uh, 15 years old, 16. Uh, but 2018 was like, okay, I'm gonna actually pursue it. Because um, before that, I wanted to do breakdancing, uh, which I stopped because I was not talented. That's a whole other story. But yeah, so I'm pursuing filmmaking. Uh, essentially tried out other things, tried cinematography, tried um, seeing if I could get a movie set and work my way up. Uh, felt that the best way was to <clears throat> learn storytelling. It's a very broad subject, uh, storytelling, but yeah, I want to learn how to be a good storyteller. And I don't think that necessarily means I need to be good at um, you know, cinematography, all these different film uh, areas. But you know, dream would be to be a writer, director, or at least a writer, even though I don't write because I'm not good at English. I mean, I'm, I'm not foreign, but like not good at writing. Would be, yeah, not good at writing. So essentially how I've approached that is I read a lot of screenwriting books, you know, Story by Robert McKee, The Writer's Journey, by Christopher Vogler, John York's Into the Woods, um, John Truby's I Know Your Story. And these were like all screenwriting books and I didn't really, yeah, they probably went for some people didn't didn't really catch my attention. Didn't it didn't feel like they showed the essence of, you know, that sort of soul and they didn't they didn't explain like the soul behind the um mo the films. Like what that was. They were, yeah. But a book that I felt really did this well was uh, The Hero of a Thousand Faces. And essentially that's not a screenwriting book. You know, it's famous because George Lucas was mentored, uh, like at least in part by and many of the ideas inspired Star Wars from The Hero of a Thousand Faces. Uh, what that book is, is essentially Joseph Campbell studied comparative mythology and religion, so he studied all these mythologies and then compared them. And the reason he compared them is, um, you know, most uh, societies and civilizations have had, you know, some body of myth myths or religions, uh, you know, in a, in a society or civilization to sort of hold the society together or uh, sort of like a bedrock to the society. Um, and I'm not sure if it's accurate, but I'm pretty sure like most if not all civilizations have had some sort of mythology or religion. And the idea is that it's it's sort of like a, a necessary thing for us to do to survive as a species is to make these mythologies and religions. And it's one of those things that spurred us onto like evolving uh, like much further past the animals. And the reason why is they, they, they believe it's because they're able to teach morality between a lot of societies. So sorry, morality among a civilization. And so that everyone sort of has this morality to aspire to and uh, follow, but also everyone else in the society also follows that uh, morality and uh, and so everyone's sort of on the same page culturally of how to act with each other. And obviously these mythologies and uh, religions are thousands of years old. And so Joseph Campbell's idea was that like there's a common thread of the traits that make society survive and the certain rules and things that the, their mythologies held. And that there was a and that you know the variables for success and survivability are like at the core all the same. And so that all these different religions and mythologies all 
you know, tell the same story and all sort of come together and link, but they, because they ultimately show how to survive and thrive as humanity. Survive sounds like a pre-reduction statement, I think there's more to it than just that, but, and there's also the fact that they, you know, trillions of, or billions of stories have been told, but only these few have survived, you know, thousands of years, and so there's something about them that resonates so deeply with humans that we keep telling them and they're enthralling to us, and so that essentially is what his book is, he's, he's trying to lay out these different patterns, bring together, you yeah, know, there's some criticism that he's sort of post hoc rationalizing these um, patterns, but I don't know, it's a really good book to read regardless if you want to understand storytelling. Like I said, this was the first book that really described to me the, it really felt like it explained the like underlying essence of like what is going on when you watch a beautiful movie or whatever. Um, what, what are those, you know, experiences that you're getting and why they're happening and stuff like that. And so the book I'm reading now, Maps of Me by John Payson, is sort of like uh, Here with a Thousand Faces times 10, in my opinion. It's, it does the same thing, but it, it attacks the uh, problem from 50 different angles. Uh, you know, phenomenology, neurobiology, neuropsychology, psychology, like all these different uh, fields that I don't know much about, but reading this book I'm learning a slight bit about. And it gives a much more comprehensive view of like how does the human um, mind work and perceive and how is it nested in narratives. And yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to sort of figure out how, what is the nature of uh, consciousness and like being and how does that, how is it affected by narratives so I can make better narratives. And I'm essentially going to try my best to explain what I've learned so far, what are the sort of rocks, I mean, bricks I've been able to lay in terms of getting a foundation of how to understand what he's talking about. Of course, I do not understand all. I think I'm going to spend the next few decades trying to understand it. It's very interesting to me, very enthralling. But yeah, I'll explain what to my best. So start off. You know, it is first, well, after his introduction, he's like first chapter, it's called Object and Meaning. Uh, he says we have like two ways of really perceiving the world. One is what the world is or what the world is made up of, and the other is how we should act in the world. He says the first one, um, what the world is made up of, is the one we have given a lot more precedence over in recent years with the whole scientific, uh, what the Enlightenment in the 1800s, whatever, we're very scientifically minded in the current age, and we don't really think about the second of how we should act. Um, and that these two things have different sort of worldviews or ways to perceive the world, and we're very much in the scientific one, or so we believe, I don't know. Um, but the scientific worldview, what the world is made up of, can't tell you how to act. You can't derive an ought from an is. Um, that's the impossible goal. And how we act in the world is, uh, comes from, you know, our experience and our experience sort of, and perceiving the world is like a place to act, uh, derives more on how we value the world and where values come from and different stuff like that. And that's, and perceiving the world in that way is a different way. And it's sort of the way we perceive the world, you know, up until like the 1800s of the world being as a place of, uh, action and it being a place of action, it having a value and meaning behind it. Um, so I'm still going to try and explain, you know, he gives all these uh, arguments why we need those two distinctions. You can read the book if you want to understand that more. But I'm going to sort of explain the worldview that we've sort of lost in a sense and he's, he's trying to regain what this worldview is really good at explaining how stories work, which is why I'm really interested in it and why they're effective and what makes a good story. So the way we perceive the world, it, if it's a place to act in, that the world is, I think, fundamentally, this is like sort of the bricks I'm talking about, like the, the first brick would be the world is fundamentally made up of chaos and order. And chaos is, uh, I'll start with order. Order is where we are when we know how to get what we want. So, you know, I'm, I'm in my car right now, but it's outside my house. In my house, that's a place of order because if I'm hungry, I know how to get food easily. If I'm thirsty, if I'm tired, I know where to sleep. If, I, if I'm cold, I know where to get warm. Uh, you know, all those different things. And if it's not, it's not in my house, it's in my border community, I know how to achieve that. And so, yeah, and you can see those objects as well. Like, so this car, you know, I don't know every intricate detail about it. I don't know anything about how, like, the engine stuff works. It's a very low resolution degree, I do know. But it, it has, its meaning to me is fine. Is, is, is deep enough that I know that how to operate it to use it as a tool to get me to, um, you know, different locations or whatever. And I know to the resolution necessary that I'm missing in society, so if the car breaks down or whatever, I know how to call up the, you know, RACV or whatever to come fix it. And so I know enough order about this uh, car to use it effectively as a tool to fulfill my desires. Uh, whereas chaos is where you are when you don't know how to get what you want, or you don't even know what, what you want. Uh, and, you know, you can think of that like, okay, just say a, a guy wants to get a girlfriend, you know, he's got to go into places he doesn't know, into chaotic places he doesn't understand, and like put himself in situations he hasn't been in before to, you know, achieve that one. And by doing that, he expands his sort of knowledge of the world. Um, and so, the book goes into like a lot of detail about how these work. I'm still trying to figure out how chaos and order works. It's much harder than I previously thought. But he sort of has those as like the bedrock fundamental, uh, what, matter of existence? It's not matter, but like base of what existence is. And of course, the third one be uh, irrelevant, but it's irrelevant. So everything is made up of chaos, order, or it's irrelevant. So yeah, chaos and order is fundamentally created by narratives that we are embedded in. Um, and what I mean by that is, like, as a human, we experience, so, whatever, I'm, I experience, like, hunger, uh, you know, I'm slightly thirsty, I, whatever, I have all these different motivational drives going on within me, and those motivational dri drives create a, um, fantasized future of fulfilling those dis uh, motivational drives. So I'm hungry, and I think, oh man, a sandwich would be great, and so that future sandwich or whatever, in my mind, is, 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 is like, this goal I'm working towards in a narrative, so, uh, and then, uh, so I have, what is, slightly hungry, what should be, I should eat a sandwich, and then the third part is how I should get there. And that's the basic narrative that we're always within. The, where am I? Where am I going? How should I get there? And that this uh, directs what we perceive around us, and directs what is chaos and what is order around us. Like, if I am, and, and, and like the environments within, we're in. So I could say I'm in an ordered environment now because I can fulfill that hunger desire very in like five minutes, um, and it, I, I don't risk anything really from doing it. But if, let's say, you know, I'm on a desert island, 
and there's no food around, I gotta quickly learn how to transform the chaotic environment around me so I can figure out a way to get food. Um, and so there are two different environments. But it doesn't just, it's, it's not like the geological environment is different. Like if someone, I don't know, someone was to blow up my house or half my house, or if there was like a rubber in my house or something like that, then of course I'll probably have different motivations than trying to eat a sandwich. But the environment has fundamentally changed and what is chaos and what is order is completely different. Even though I'm in the same space, um, I'm sort of in a completely different location. I'm, I'm in the chaos realm instead of the ordered realm. Uh, so that's sort of what I'm, so that's narratives. And then there's different types of narratives. The two main ones is normal, normal life, which is narratives, which is just like three parts, where it's, okay, where am I? Where am I going? How should I get there? And that being successful. And then there's the other narrative, which is the revolutionary narrative, where it's, where am I? You know, I'm embedded, I'm sort of on my path to where I'm going. But then, because then something catastrophic happens and it throws me off my path. And, and, and then I'm in, so I'm in the chaos realm. And from the chaos realm, I have to reconceptualize uh, what is, like what I'm feeling. I have to reconceptualize new goals, because maybe the other goals have been thrown away and I'm unable to achieve them. And maybe they weren't the path of goals to go towards. And I gotta conceptualize a new place that I'm going in. This change is is what changes our personality and changes good, we want to change for the better. And so it's sort of like underlying, you know, bricks I've sort of laid of how to understand how to perceive the world as a place to act. And what I'm learning now is what is like the sort of experience, how does experience, like before experience comes up to create what is and then a narrative forms from that. Like how does experience work? So I know like, okay, so we have hunger experience, we have water, I mean, thirst experience, we have whatever sexual desire, temperature regulation, all these different things coming up for different reasons. Um, I'm sort of trying to figure out what the experience, nature, experience, um, Call like Nexus or something works. And so that's sort of what I've been learning at the moment. He's got a chapter in his book called The Balance of Things. Um, so that was a chapter I was reading this morning. And I'm sort of trying to build up a sort of model of how the, I guess you could say, motivational drives or emotions, what they all are, how they operate, um, and how they manifest themselves in the world. And what I've learned from that is when you're in chaos, you have certain like different emotions, usually like anxiety, fear. He's sort of got these frameworks of like, okay, what are the emotions you feel in chaos? <coughs> what are the emotions you feel in order? And he, he sort of started with that, which I didn't understand why, but I understand it a bit more now. Because I think we should start with like what are our biological drives at the base and how do they become more complex to form these other things. But yeah, that's what I'm learning right now. I don't have a thorough understanding of it yet. I think I'll talk about it tomorrow in the next video. And yeah, that's sort of the explanation of what maps of meaning is about. Um, and there's plenty more to it than what I talked about today. Definitely read it yourself or watch these lectures, they're amazing. But yeah, I'm gonna continue with my day. I'm not sure what time it is now. It was like 8.30 when I originally wanted to make this video. But I think I'm gonna study for an extra hour today because I got a whole day off. It's 9 40. So this video took me an hour to do because we kept stuffing up. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to study for maybe for an extra hour today. I'm going to read the Bhagavad Gita for at least 15 minutes to one hour. <coughs> Excuse me, there's a little dust in here. It's pretty talking. And what else did I do? Edit this vlog. Hmm. I might go traveling somewhere, even though it's raining. But yeah, see you then. <laughs>
Uh, they got classes every day, every morning night, so I'm going to go tomorrow night. I'll book for that. I'll do that now so I don't forget. Um, and yeah, 